Hello, Sale. How are you? Hello, Betsy. <sighs> Chin Chin, getting a little water going. Yesterday was a long day. I had a, um, I did a wine tasting last night uh, for a group of people. Sorry for that. I had a drop down coming in. So guys, today is a really, really, really weird day. This is the first time in my whole life that today is not Derby Eve. This is the first time in many, uh, I, I have thrown a Derby half of the years that I've been alive. I was planning to throw a massive Derby party tomorrow. I'd already started inviting people like in January. I was so excited to do it. Pardon me, I'm having a little ginger beer because I'm a little queasy this morning. Mm. So I thought it would be a good thing to prepare in advance for September's Derby, fingers crossed. So what I'm gonna make is something that is absolutely um, Kentucky, something that is absolutely Derby, and something that you have to make because you can't buy it. Now there might be some people in Kentucky who say you can buy this, but I've never found any that's nearly as good as what you actually make yourself. The reason I'm making Benedictine today and not pimento cheese is that Nowadays, where I go to the beach, there's a little, uh, there's an old woman who's been making pimento cheese and selling it at the fish market for my whole life. But now, her, I guess her kids must have taken over the business and they've expanded it. And so now you can get palmetto cheese, which is made in Pauly's Island, South Carolina. And it is phenomenal. It's as good or better than anything you can make yourself. So that you can buy. Um, Benedictine, you can. So, hello everybody. So what we're doing today is making Benedictine. And of course, my kitchen, my refrigerator is overflowing. And of course, there's something missing. So what are you gonna do? We're gonna make the most out of it. So this is only a few little ingredients. So let's get started. So you need to have a large peeled and seeded cucumber. I have denuded and deseeded it. And I'm gonna take this and just cut that up and put it in my little food processor and to little bits to make it easier, right? Easy peasy, easy, easy, easy peasy. Get my little guys in here, one more. Then this really couldn't be simpler. Now this is a dish, the reason it's called Benedictine is because the lady who came up with the um, Miss Jeannie was named Jeannie Benedict and she uh, ran a tea room for many years in the early 20th century in Louisville, and she also for a period of time was the food critic for the Louisville Courier Journal, or maybe not the food critic, uh, she was probably more like the uh, uh, the lady who wrote about, you know, things going on, goings on. I don't think they let women have judgments in the newspaper back then, right? So, we've got our large uh, cucumber, we've got a package of cream cheese, and I still buy Philly, even though I know that there are other um, options that are organic and stuff, but they're sometimes not exactly the same consistency. And so I know that every recipe that calls for cream cheese is taking into consideration what Philadelphia's brand is like, right? So a couple of chunks in here. Well, there you go. That's me making a big mess. Here we go. A couple of chunks in here. Then. I'm starting to fill up, right? Looky hands one second. I tried so hard to do it right. So here we go. And then it calls for two tablespoons of grated onion. And you could just chop them up since we're putting it all in here. But I had the time and you know how I do love a grater. Then salt and pepper. I was thinking of my nephew, so I gave it 12 chunks and just a little teaspoon of salt, because we can always add more salt later if we choose to. And the last thing it calls for is a, a tablespoon of mayonnaise. So I had don't, I don't, I forgot, I keep forgetting to get mayonnaise. So I'm gonna put a heaping teaspoon, tablespoon of uh, full fat Greek yogurt and just a little drizzle of olive oil to give it that extra bit of fat, which I assume is what it's looking for. And now I have completely overfilled my guy. 
So let me see if I can smash some of this down in here before I put the top on. Oh, nice, nice, nice. There we go. Get all that smushed down. See, if I were doing this for a party tomorrow, I would have to make two or three of these, I'm afraid. So anyway, here we go. And the great thing about Benedictine spread is that really what you're making is a perfect finger sandwich, right? Cucumber sandwiches are awesome, but you have to take it. You have to get the thin, thin, thin spread of mayonnaise on both sides, and you have to paper thin slice your cucumbers and lay them out and cut your crusts, blah, blah, blah. This is basically a cucumber sandwich in a spread. What could be more delicious? So I'm gonna hold on tight. Ah, there we go, guys. It's starting to go. Oh, look at that. As soon as it stops being chunky, I'm going to turn it the other way. There we go. Oh, yeah, that is great, guys. Here we go. Now, the one last little thing that you want to do, and the only reason I have food coloring at all, is to make my Benedictine perfect. So, you do not want to overdo it, so be very careful. One drop. Oop, not quite. One drop two drops. Now let's see what we get here. Let's see, I think it needs a little bit of moving about and maybe one more tiny, tiny drop of green. Let's try a little hot. One more drop of green. There we go. And now, that's perfect. See how it's just palest, palest green? If it gets too green, it doesn't, it doesn't look like food anymore, I feel like. So there we go. And that is as hard as that is. So now you've got Benedictine spread for not derby tomorrow. But these go greatly. You can you can eat it on crackers. You can eat it on. Th you want really really thin thin white bread. Ideally, the Little Pepperidge Farms cocktail bread is fantastic for it. Um, so that's it. I can't. I'm not having a derby party tomorrow. Although, if anybody wants to come by my house and drink, I do have a big bottle of bourbon, and I've got plenty of mint, so I could make some simple syrup pretty fast and we could just sit around and drink all day. So y'all, that's about it for today. It's Friday, tomorrow's Saturday. Tomorrow should be derby, but it's not. So I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I might, hello Ryan, I might, hello Lisa, hello Muggsy. Um, hello Mike, I might do something like go get some, uh, some pimento cheese and maybe make a Juicy Lucy or something, but I gotta figure out something to do to nod to derby because it just doesn't feel right. I may get up and wear a big hat tomorrow just because I can. And when else do you get to wear your big old hats? Nobody wears hats to church anymore. I don't know, guys. See, Mike is making beaten biscuits this afternoon. Now, I did, y'all. Look at this. Look what I found yesterday. A whole jar of yeast. So I could make those biscuits that I made, the, made a couple weeks ago that are my derby biscuits that didn't do everything quite right because I was using old yeast and made my own buttermilk and that kind of stuff. So I might do that tomorrow. You never know. So you guys, thank you so much. As, as always, thank you for coming and being with me today. You give me a reason to get out of bed every morning and that is very important. I've seen just this morning watching the morning news, I realized that there's a lot of talk about mental health right now. And so you guys are my mental health. I can't thank you enough for it. You give me a reason to be, you give me a place to be, you give me a reason to put clothes on every morning. Otherwise I'd be one of those crazy people running around with no pants on, right? Hello, Gina. Um, so guys, uh, yes, yeast is like gold and you can't even imagine. So this is, I, I can't remember the last time, but I paid $10 for this jar of yeast. Can somebody tell me, did I get ripped off? Should I call 311 and complain about price gouging for yeast? I'm not sure. So anyway, I, I would not because I'm just feeling so fortunate to have some. 
Um, one thing that's on my list of things that I've always wanted to make and never have is cinnamon rolls. I'm not a sweet eater, but I'm thinking I might make some cinnamon rolls. So now that I have yeast, I can make anything I want. So you guys, thank you so much. Do what you can do to honor Mr. Derby. <laughs> it's so hard. But I'll be here tomorrow, and I might wear a flowery dress and a big hat. So if you'd like to join me in flowery dresses and big hats, ladies, gentlemen, all of you, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Happy, happy Oaks Day. Ciao, ciao.